Mr. Benz, thank you for your patience. We've been working on some other stuff. Absolutely, it's kind of hard to hear you. Yes, that's what I understand. So I'll try to, I, we've got audio problems. This is file 23419FY, People versus William E. Benz. Mr. Benz is charged with possession of methamphetamine, operating with no valid license, and having no insurance. This is alleged, according to this, to have occurred on 12-15-23. We're not there yet. I think it's 12-15-22. Mr. Benz also had some other charges that had to do with a snowmobile and some other stuff. I think we've taken care of, but yes, sir. Custody, custody for this. Let me find it. Yeah, I believe all my other charges have been taken care of, except for these right here. Yes, I think you're right. This is alleged that on or about, uh, as I said, 12 15 of 22, that you did possess methamphetamine as a second or subsequent offense plus some traffic stuff. Um, Mr. David Marvin, the county prosecutor is here. Mr. Marvin, what's the plea offer here? Uh, I offered a use um, of meth. And I just wanted to say that in part, I had the opportunity to meet with him at the pretrial for the snowmobile case. He was direct and honest with me. I look back through this and he was extremely honest with law enforcement when this happened and admitted that, whoops, I forgot there was a pipe underneath my seat. Um, so I do believe this is a, an actual use case, and that's why I uh, offered this. What you're charged with right now is punishable by up to 20 years imprisonment, fine of up to $10,000. Prosecutors agreed to reduce this to a misdemeanor charge of use of methamphetamine. That's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. Do you understand the charge? Yes, sir. Mr. Trotsky, you confirm the plea offer? Yes, that is the offer that uh, Mr. Marvin and I discussed and I relate to Mr. Benz. I, um, I'd like to now, say that. If I'm you sorry. plead to this charge, do you understand you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or jury? Yes, sir. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Mr. Ross Truckee has been appointed to represent. You could also hire an attorney of your own choosing if you want. If you had a trial, you would have the right to take the witness stand and testify on your own behalf. You don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold your silence against you. And You have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You understand the charge? Yes, sir. Other than the plea agreement here, did anybody promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No, sir. Where were you going when you got pulled over? We were actually coming home. Um, I just went to a friend's house, picked up a bunch of stuff because we were in the process of moving. And uh, it just must have been up underneath the seat. I don't, I don't really know. Well, two problems. One, you don't have a driver's license. And two, you didn't have any insurance. So I'm actually more mad about that than I am about this pipe that was under the seat. But you admitted that the pipe was yours and it had meth residue in it. Right. All right. Now, we went through that old eviction case. and. That was a bad deal you got yourself into. Yes, sir. Where are you going to go if I let you out of jail? Um, I'm going to uh, South Main, right there uh, where my fiance is. Um, actually, I got I got set Thursday to leave for Waterford, Michigan to rehab because I'm still, you know, I'm still fighting with my addiction. And I just, I set it up on my own. Actually, I had it set twice to go. <laughs> and then I got arrested, so I wasn't able to make it. So my fiance is called and still has everything set in play. If I miss it this time, I won't be able to go again. Well, I want you to go, but I'm afraid you're going to relapse if I let you out today. No, sir. 
I'm not. I've been clean for a while now. You've been clean for 12 days, which is how long you've been in jail. No, I, um, I'm sorry. I was clean yeah. way prior to that, sir. All right. I'm doing very well with my recovery. Um, this time I finally took it serious and get my head out of my butt. You know, I'm tired of the I'm same repeated things. Get clean. I, I knew you before methamphetamine. Yes, sir. I'm just tired of the same repeated thing because all it does is just bring you right back to here and get my kids disappointed at me and my loved ones hurt. You know, I'm just I'm finally starting to grow up. I've been clean for almost six months and I just want to keep moving forward with my recovery. All right. Are you still with Jezreel? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to order 13 days jail credit, 13 days. $75 fine, $75 crime victims rights fee, $50 state minimum fee and $150 attorney fee. That's almost like a paraphernalia charge, which is essentially what this was. I'm gonna give you to August 1st to pay this. I'm not doing a probation. You're already set to go to rehab. What I don't want you to do is have somebody offer you a pipe between now and Thursday. You gotta get- No, sir. I wouldn't take it. I'm too far in my recovery, but thank you. Where on South Main? Uh, it's right behind Huss School. It's her mom's house. Well, that's not South Main. That's uh, Broadway. Broadway. Street or something. I'm sorry. I don't really know the address there. <laughs> we have uh, we have opportunity to buy her mom's house since her mother passed away, and that's just you know another goal that I'm trying to work forward to in our life. I hope it's a better deal than that last one you got into. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Um, I wish you well. You're right. You. We're doing the same thing over and over again. How about if you don't come see me for a while? Absolutely. All right. Good luck, sir. It's file number 211632, People versus Jim Lee Corrente. This file's got some history to it. It's from February 19th of 2021. Mr. Carrenti charged with uttering and publishing false bills. Um, I have some recollection of this. He's been here a couple of times trying to get straight up on this file. Mr. Carrenti lives in Kalamazoo County. He's dead. We have a correct address for him. All right, I won't put it on the record here, but we'll get it. All right. Mr. Crenty is here with his lawyer, Mr. John Bush. Also present is prosecuting attorney David Marvin. The allegation is that on or about February 19th of 21, you passed a forced, false or forced, excuse me, a forged, false or altered counterfeit federal reserve note. It's a five-year felony and a fine of up to $2,500, and you're charged as a fourth habitual offender. Yeah, we thought this was going to be a plea, but he's changed his mind and wants a prelim. All right. Uh, Mr. Carrenti, the allegation is that you presented some false $20 bills. Uh, what was the plea offer, Mr. Marvin? M well, it was larceny 200, less than a thousand. That was um, in consideration that he was getting services in Kalamazoo and I didn't want to disrupt that, but I guess that's going to change. So it's 753564A. He's very concerned about missing services on drug court in Kalamazoo. Well, to get a new felony charge is probably a good way to do it. Mr. Marvin has offered a misdemeanor and tried to keep him in his program in Kalamazoo. Uh, if he wants a prelim, he's entitled to have one, but let's lay this out. Mr. Carrenti, the allegation is that on February 21st, you did some deal during Facebook Marketplace to buy a remote control car. 
and you came down here and gave these people the allegation is some counterfeit bills and they were later confirmed to be counterfeit. Um, and they did a search warrant at your house and found this car that you bought as well as more counterfeit money. So that was in Calhoun County. And I think you also had some stuff in Kalamazoo County. So that's the allegation that you, it's actually a federal offense, but they charge you with the state statute. Mr. Marvin has agreed to dismiss the felony as a fourth habitual offender for a plea to a misdemeanor charge. Um, although the amount in question was $100 for purposes of the plea agreement, Mr. Marvin has offered a misdemeanor less than 1,000, but more than 200 which could be for purposes of a misdemeanor plea. That's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000, as opposed to a 20 year maximum on the principal charge as a habitual. You do have a right to have a preliminary examination in this matter, which would be set for next Tuesday at one o'clock. You also have the right to waive it and have the matter bound over to circuit court or you also have the right to plead to, in this case, a misdemeanor and have the felony charge dismissed. You've been sitting back there anxiously. We thought there was a plea agreement. You went out and discussed things further with Mr. Bush. He indicated you wish to have a prelim. Well, I've got so much going on in Kalamazoo, like I'm afraid I'm gonna miss classes. Well, you're gonna miss classes if you end up with a felony charge as a fourth habitual offender. Um, Mr. Marvin is offering a misdemeanor attempting to keep you in those classes. Okay. Um, so it's up to you. Either way is okay with me. But I, I would, I'd like to keep it in a misdemeanor for him. All right, Mr. Marvin, what's your thought here? Well, I was going to say that um, it was because he's participating in services someplace else. I didn't want to disrupt that. I don't have any restitution I'm asking for. Because uh, we haven't heard from the, the victim, they haven't responded. And I didn't have any uh, desire, really. I wasn't going to ask the court to impose any jail. I was going to leave it to the court. I really wanted him to get up there and take care of his business, but I wanted to document what was a crime of moral turpitude. And that was it. All right, Mr. Carranti, did you hear what Mr. Marvin said? And did you hear what I said when I went through the advice of rights earlier? Yes. And are you going to plead to that larceny charge? Yes. I thought we were going to do it by mental contest earlier. Yeah. All right. Well, I'd rather have him admit it. We'll find out here. All right, did you, how did you make these fake $20 bills? I didn't make any. Where did you get them? I had no, I had no recollection of it um, being passed. All right, well, they did a search warrant at your house and found a bunch of counterfeit money. Where did that come from? Um, I believe from, I got to do a lot of wheeling and dealing. I sold a car. Um, that was like my job for two years was wheeling and dealing. Might have came through there. What are you on probation for in Kalamazoo? Possession. Of uh, what? Controlled substance. Which one? Meth. Okay. You seem clean now. Are they testing you regularly in drug Daily, court? Yeah. Who's your judge? Um, I don't remember her name. Um, I see her three times a week month as well. Um, Judge Buchanan? That sounds, that sounds about right. Well, I think I was a cold or something, a bug or something hit me. Oh, Judge Buchanan is a... Uh, um, uh, the, the, the judge that sentenced me was White Bolt. Okay. But the judge I see three times a month, her name was um, 
Bernard or something like that, I believe. I, I know who we're talking about. She runs the treatment court. Yeah. Um, all right. I'll show this as a no contest fee for benefit of the bargain. Let's see how long you're in jail. You have $250 worth of bond. You got arrested more than once. You got arrested back in 21 on December 8th, and you post the bond on December 10th. So you did two days there. Then you failed to appear for a pre-exam conference. You were in the Branch County Jail. Why were you in Branch County? South County Sheriff. All right. Yeah, I don't think you're being straight up about it. I think you were buying this stuff with counterfeit money in Calhoun Branch here. But according to you, you don't know nothing about nothing. I think you did two more days, four days jail credit for. I don't like that, that you wouldn't tell me what you did, um, which means you're still thinking like a criminal. No, that's why I was going to see if I could take it to like a free one to get more, how to get more residency on it. Well, do you want to plead to this or not? I'm about to give you four days jail and a fine. Yeah, plead no. And I think you're peeing on my leg and tell me that's raining. No, just, you got a bunch of counterfeit money. You bought this with a bunch of bogus, not very good $20 bills. You got convicted of counterfeit money in another county. And here you are, don't know nothing about nothing. I'm going to do what Mr. Marvin said and let you get back to Kalamazoo. All right, I'm just going down and out now. I got a couple bad cold three days ago. Like it's hit me the hardest today. Well, that doesn't make you not tell me the truth. No. Um, I'm going to order a $100 restitution for this dumb our remote control car that was a subject of this. Um, I mean, it's not dumb. The car isn't, but the whole transaction is. There is a $75 crime victim's rights fee, a $75 fine, $50 state minimum fee, and $150 attorney fee. That's $450. You have a $250 bond as part of a 10% bond. The court keeps 10% of a 10% bond. So there's $225 to apply to this. So you owe $225. I'm going to make that due by July 1st. Are you working somewhere? Yes. Where's that? The moon right there. Okay. Between near Battle Creek there? Yeah. I didn't know it was still open. Didn't that close? One of them did. There's one on Beta Lake Road that's been open for a while. Yeah, that's the one you work at? Yeah. I thought they changed the name or something. Is it still called Moon Raider? Yeah, they had the one on Columbia and they changed it to uh, Moon Raider West. It used to be the old hunt club. All right. Well, the good news is this thing is done. As long as you pay the fine, I see why Mr. Marvel wants to bring closure to this. All right, you're free to go. Thank you, Judge. Thank you.